Hello internet friends, how are you? I hope you're good, I hope you're staying safe and drinking plenty of water. It is really hot outside, well today is kind of okay, but yesterday was just... <sighs> I feel like I'm literally melting, but that's okay, that's just summer for you isn't it? In case you're wondering, um, the background is different because I am actually back home in my flat. Well, I was home before and now I'm home again. I'm back home in my student flat, so uh, the environment is a bit different here. I hope you still like it. I'm still looking for a nice place where I could shoot. I'm currently sitting at my desk. What better thing to do in the heat than dress up in fake fur and paint yourself pink? That's what I did anyways, because I finally got around to taking some pictures of my Laura Olympus Persephone cosplay. They didn't turn out too great, <laughs> um, because I had to take them myself with the timer on, and that is quite hard, turns out. I wanted to take that as an opportunity to actually make videos on how I made that cosplay in particular. See you in a few take eggs. So today I wanted to start off with the cape. The whole costume consists of, well, two sewn pieces and then a couple of accessories. One of which is this cape, the other one is a dress. can't really give you a pattern for this one since I used one that I already had and it's, it's a commercialised pattern and I don't want to copy it off or anything. Not about plagiarism, that's just something we don't do on here. But I can still show you the process and it's pretty much the same with any cape, so if you have your own pattern at home, um, the steps should probably be very similar. I also made plenty of mistakes in the process of making this, so if nothing at all, you may at least get like an idea out of it of what not to do. So take myself as a negative example if you must. Okay, but enough talking, let's get sewing. Okay, okay, sorry, not yet. As with any sewing project, you will first have to cut out your fabric. What you can see here is this beautiful fake fur that I got off my regular side for sewing supplies. Um, I ordered it off their German website, but I think they have different sides in different languages. So I'll check that out and leave a link for you down below. I have never had any issues with them, but I've heard from some people from my local cosplay workshop that they had, so I wanted to mention that just in case, and for transparency's sake. Oh, and also, I am in no way sponsored by them or anything like that. I think it's pretty obvious, but I still kind of feel like I have to say it because of European internet law and, and stuff like that. Just look at it. It is so fluffy and pretty and shiny and shimmery. Oh, it had all of those tiny little paillettes on them and it's, it's beautiful. <sighs> you know, it's, it's the kind of fabric I never knew I needed in my life. <laughs> I saw it and I felt like I wanted to incorporate it into some sort of cosplay or piece of clothing that I had to sew. And I've also been wanting to cosplay Kare slash Persephone from Laura Olympus for a while, so those two things just came together. So I want to take this moment to just nerd out a little bit about Laura Olympus. In case you're not already familiar, it is this gorgeous webtoon by Rachel Smith, um, aka used Band-Aid on, on most of her social media, and it is basically a modern retelling of the myth of Hades and Persephone. I still remember a bunch of people cosplaying the characters on Instagram and I saw that and I noticed the ancient Greek names on it and as a former Greek mythology nerd kid, I know, we all had one of those phases too, didn't we? Just had to check it out and <laughs> to be fair it is tagged as romance on the webtoons page which isn't really my genre. <laughs> um, but like also that kind of comes with the story, doesn't it? So I tried it out because it has so much more going for it. First off, Persephone is way more proactive in the story, which I think is, is great. Second, it tackles plenty of critical topics that come kind of with the myths it tackles as well. Because, because Greek mythology can come with a lot of 
icky topics, especially when looking back at it from a modern lens. Um, so it tackles a lot of these topics and I think it does so very well, like from, from what I can say. Um, and the, the character design, oh my god. <laughs> the world design, the character design, the fashion choices, it's just all so gorgeous and it comes out so well with the art style, which is one of my favourite things of all times <laughs> about this webtoon. <sighs> oh my god, the art style, it is just so gorgeous. So why this version of this? She wears all sorts of outfits all throughout the story and the one I went with was the Tartarus Persephone outfit with a cape and the cute little cutout dress. I'll try and include a picture somewhere, I don't know, <laughs> somewhere on the screen. <laughs> um, I know the fake fur I chose would lend itself pretty well to the somewhat iconic fake fur coat she gets from Hades in like one of the first episodes. Mm, but that's also one of the outfits I see a lot out there and I didn't really want to do something a lot of people are doing already. I kind of fell in love with the outfit. That's just, that's just the thing. I mentioned that the fashion in Laura Olympus is just gorgeous and it is but sometimes I have those outfits where I'm just like oh my god I would love to wear that <laughs> um, or I would love to make that and I, I also really like capes. It's no capes! Back to the actual thing that we were doing. <laughs> um, yes, cutting out the fabric. Since I also lined my cape, I also needed to cut out the same pieces from my lining fabric. Yes, I know, more work and a lot of cosplayers don't really do it, but also a nicer feeling just feels nicer on the skin, especially with the fake fur because it was a bit rough on the like, inside. This is some rose-coloured satin, I think. Yeah, rose-coloured satin. I bought off the same side. I think it looks cute, and I like the idea of sticking with Corey's colour theme a little bit and, and mixing it up. While I also got to add some little details and my own personal touch to it. Plus, a lot of the fashion in Laura Olympus just looks so high quality and designer. And so I think, like, they'd be lined. So, like, almost every piece of clothing. Cora's cape has a back side and a front side. Well, I guess since we're going to be closing it in the front side with a bunch of buttons, it probably has like two front pieces, but you know what I mean, right? Right? <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. The interesting thing here is that um, the cape pattern splits the entire thing up into two more pieces so what we'll have to start with is adding those two together so i grouped the front pieces into pairs and i grouped the back pieces into pairs and then sewed them together to end up with two pieces each You will have to do the whole process for your top coat as well as your lining fabric. And this is where my first mistake happened. Yay! I did not leave room for the armholes. That was stupid. <laughs> Very stupid. And it's even stupider. Stupider. Even more stupid. Anyways, it's even dumber. I just say dumber. It's even dumber when you consider that I've made this cape before <laughs> and actually knew how to do it. So what you should do and what you want to do if you want to do it properly, you should mark off where your armholes are going to be first and then sew the pieces together but leave space 
where you'd marked off the armholes. Okay, your pieces should have a rounded edge as well as a straight edge. The rounded edge is where your shoulder will be later on when you wear the garment, whereas the straight edge is where the buttons will go. Okay, now you can add the whole cape together. You should have two shoulder seams at the back, like you should have a back piece that looks something like that, with the shoulder seams being rounded off, and two front pieces that have the shoulder and the straight edge. You'd want to pin the shoulders together and then sew it on. You'll do the same thing for both the lining as well as the top coat. And then you can add the top coat and the lining together. Take the whole fabric right and right and then sew along the edges. Please be aware that you'll keep one seam open, in my case this was the hem, so that you can flip it inside out later on. Okay, back to my big mistake. The armholes. Ah, yes. The armholes. <sighs> Not a good thing. Not at all. But, but wait, I can actually show you how it's supposed to be done. Wait a second. Wait a second. Oh, shouldn't have done that. Wait a second. I'm getting the other cake. Here we go. I should probably trim that. <laughs> But this is how it's supposed to be done. This is what it's supposed to look like. You know, this is the cape I used to make. Um, <laughs> this is the cape. This is the cape I made from the exact same pattern. And this is what happens when you actually mark it off properly. And this is what I actually did. First try. I opened up the seam where I wanted the holes to be because I had to open it up because I'd sewn over it. <sighs> then rolled up the fabric around the edges, you know, twice like I'd usually do it with a hem and tried to sew it on. Then I tried to sew both openings onto each other. No bueno, that did not work. The fur would bulk up, the satin would slip and fray. All in all, very messy, a sad, fussy mess would not recommend. Okay, second try, same thing. This time I just took the fabric in while I was sewing around the edge. I wanted it to seem as if it were a really clean edge on the outside, but I only tucked it in once and then just tried and sew it together. Did not work, looked like crap again. Again, would not recommend.
Okay, last one. I got some bias tape at the store. I had to get some anyways, since it's what I wanted to use to, you know, uh, hem the cutouts of the dress. Sometimes I think it just helps to step away from a project for a while and do something else entirely, like I did here, like I worked on the dress for some time and just let the cape sit. Because you might come back with some fresh ideas in mind and it might make some of the problems you were facing a lot easier. So I just used the bias tape to clean up the fraying edges and it worked fine. I finally had a clean hole to work with. Phrasing. <sighs> I'm still not super happy with the outcome. <clears throat> I need to drink something, sorry. I'm still not super happy with the outcome. Like it's not super visible to outsiders, but like I know it's there and that's what makes it frustrating for me. <laughs> and honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if I went back at some point in the future and just tried and adjusted. The whole thing is really, really bulky around the shoulders as well as my arms whenever I put them through the openings. And yes, this may partially be to my really sloppy work, <laughs> not gonna lie, um, but I also put a lot of responsibility off onto the fabric because it was not a good fabric choice to go with. Here's why. I really love the fake fur as well as the light pink lining in combination with it, but both were a fucking bitch to work with. And that is putting it mildly. <sighs> Both of them are awfully prone to fraying and fuzzing, and the lining is super slippery and wouldn't stay where you'd pin it, whereas the fur would bulk really easily and then you couldn't really work with it properly, and it's just... it was just a whole entire mess. And, well, also looking back at it, both of these fabrics are very light and soft, and they fall very easily and they fall very lightly, which is great for wearing, but if you look at this cape again, like the fabric I used, it's this kind of heavyish wool fabric. I think it's a wool blend, I'm not sure. But you can see that it is a lot harder and more bendy and less. How do I say this? It's a lot harder and stronger, so it would make the fabric fall differently than the whole fake fur and satin combination. And that's what makes it stand out more and what gives the garment a lot more strength. So it would keep its form more easily. The fake fur, it's it's not made to hold the form as well as the, the wool does. So it doesn't work as well. But yeah. My heart was kind of set on it and I also didn't really want to start over, so I went with it and I think it looks cute and I like it, but in the end it wasn't really the best fabric to use for this project. So with the body of the cape kind of done, I added the colour. I cut out the colour pieces a little bit bigger than I'd actually have to, because if you look back at the reference photo you can see that the cape's colour really stands out and is really big. It's like is hiding behind it. I then did what I basically do whenever I make a collar. I edit the lining fabric onto the coating fabric and ironed in some interfacing, then flipped the whole thing around and closed up the hem. After that I just sewed it onto the body of the cape. Again, mistake. I probably, this is one I like to do a lot sometimes. Yeah, I like to do that one a lot actually. 
and it's probably it boils down to probably not paying proper attention. I probably could have done a lot better by not closing the hem of the collar and just adding the upper seam of the cape's body in there and then closing it like that. But you know, it's not that big of a deal. <laughs> in the end it's not that big of a deal. The collar done and most of the body of the cape done, I put it on my doll. That way I'd have a better look at how it would fall and then I cut the hem and then just tucked in the edges of the fabrics, pinned it and sewed around it to finish up the hem. So the only thing you want to do now is add the buttons. This is just basic procedure. I first laid them on there, pinned them on there to just see where I wanted them to be, then sewed the buttons on by hand and um, marked off where the buttonholes would go so that I could properly close up the cape. That's pretty much it, I think. <laughs> I feel like I've forgotten something, but I think that's pretty much it. If I actually have forgotten something, I will of course let you know, but yeah, that's how I made the cape. It is actually a fairly easy sewing project if you don't mess up in the middle of it and if you pick the right fabrics, <laughs> but you know, that's what I'm here for. You can learn from my mistakes and do better than me. It's okay. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you managed to learn a little bit from this, even if it's just how not to do things. <laughs> uh, and I'd love to see you back next time when I show you how I made the dress. Please feel free to check out my social media, as always, I've linked them below. You can also check out the charity of the month, which I've always been linking in my videos ever since, well, yeah, since a while back. If you like this video, I would love for you to give it a thumbs up or to just subscribe if you're up for more. Please have a great day, take care of yourself, stay safe and never forget, you live and you learn.